Good morning. I won't stay too long. <laughs> I just up on to tell them I'm all right. Um, by the end of the month, they're doing a lot of things right now. So, and it's been for me too thick and thin, and I don't want you to worry. So I said, let me up on and let you know that I'm okay. I don't want to leave you in Wonderland since the last time you see me, I was sick. A lot of my goodies know that I'm all right, but I don't think everybody know that I'm okay. And I said, let me just up on here to tell her that I'm fine. I'm all right. God is good. And I got to pick the pieces up, but I'm all right. All right. Um, yes, good morning. <laughs> I'm not supposed to come live until the end of the month because I have so much things doing. But um, I just want to hop on here to tell you guys I'm all right. Um, I don't want you to worry about me and wonder what happened to me. I'm fine. I'm not at the shelter. I'm not at the hotel. So that's good. <laughs> so um, the end of the month, I live to go live and so on and so on. But God yes. Yeah, so I don't want you to worry about me, wonder what happened to me. I know I'm not supposed to come live now because I'm starting out myself. But um, like I was talking to one of my goodies this morning, I said I should up on and let you guys know that I'm fine. I don't want you to be worrying about me. I know I'm not in the shelter and I will never go back to a shelter. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, I work with God and God work with me and God not going to have me suffer too long. And so I know I'm not staying with nobody. If that's what you want to know, I'm not catching with nobody. And I'm not in the shelter and I'm not in a hotel. I'm not saying nothing more than that until when I go live on the end of the, the month. So I've been here since the first of the month. <laughs> and um, like I said to you, it's been a rough road. It's been a rough thing. Leaving that place, take a toll on my body and my mind. Um, it, um, very sick from that place. I didn't know I was so sick. Um, leaving there and all the sickness that take my body and my mind and I waking up not realizing I'm not in that place no more and screaming and other things like that. But God is good. I'm recovering. I've been through a lot. I wasn't, I was dying. Actually, I didn't know that I was dying. Um, I remember lying down and feeling my face and I could feel all the bone that make up my face. But I still didn't realize I was dying because I was fighting to stay alive with you guys. I was coming on YouTube. My makeup looked horrible. I was just trying to make it. I'm not realizing things were so bad with me. And when I left that place, I realized, oh, bad I looked in the mirror, oh, bad everything is. So um, I'm not supposed to go live. I have to get myself together and get my looks back and so on. So I'm just here fighting and I'm also here setting up. So um, by the weekend, um, the end of the month, I'll go live with you guys. But I'm not staying with nobody and I'm not in a hotel. You figure it out. <laughs> so um, God is good to me. I could have stood another winter in a place. And I don't have much, but the little much that I have is enough for me for right now, right? I don't share anything with anybody and I don't stay with nobody's place. So you put two, two together and you figure whatever happens from there. Um, I don't stay at nobody's place. I don't stay in a hotel. I don't stay in the shelter. You figure it out. <laughs> um, that's my brand new bed. <laughs> but um, yes. Yes, I have my home now. And um, I thank you guys for being there for me. I thank you for all the trouble and trial and everything I've been through. You never left me. You never stopped subscribing to me. Um, I have a lot to talk about, but I can't do it now. Like I said, I'll just come on for five minutes to make you guys know I'm all right. And I'm just going to pick up the pieces from here on. Um, I went back to the storage. I get out most of the stuff out of the storage. And I didn't do it fast enough because it rained down. So I had to pay another $235 the day before yesterday. So I can finish getting everything. But most of the stuff that I left inside, I put them on the roadside, like clothes and shoes. I just pack everything and put them on the roadside because I want to have a new start. I figure bringing out the old clothes and shoes that I have from the old apartment and all these places and from over there is going to stop me from prospering. So even though they're brand new, so when I want to wear one or twice, I put them on the roadside. Just empty everything on the roadside and make a fresh start. I thank you for the ones who believe in me. I know that this is not the end. It's just the beginning for me because I have the most high. And I believe in God and I keep him close no matter what I was going through. So for the ones like Balson, Balson um, Reaction and all the other ones that were there for me that love me, Mrs. Phillips and a lot of you guys that was there um, just helping me to get through the process and say one day you're going to be all right. And your word has come to pass and God is good. No, no, the shelter doesn't know where I'm at. They don't know what happened to me. Um, they don't know what happened to me um, from that night I left I never went back. Um, I got a lot of strange calls stalking me. I don't know why they're stalking me, what they want from my life. 
But um, God is great and, and, and that's all matters to me right now. I walk away with my life. I'm not supposed to be walk away with my life. I'm supposed to be dead right now, but it wasn't my time. Um, my death was very close. And I didn't realize it was so close than I thought, you know, I thought that I was fine. You know, it's just like you're going to a narcissist abuse and you're just fighting to survive. You're not realizing that you're dying. And I was on my deathbed. But I remember fasting a lot and praying a lot. And every day I was praying to release a key in my hand. I said, release those keys. I said, whatever is stopping me from moving process, I bound you right now. I destroy you. I scatter my enemy. And I've been playing these prayers for days. I go fasting a lot because I want to get a breakthrough. And I did receive my breakthrough. Um, it's not a lot that I have, but it's better than where I was. And it's it's okay. I don't, you know, it's not a lot. You know, it could be better. But like I said to you, I still don't have to share anything with nobody. And I'm, I'm good by myself. When I open my door, nobody have to be in my face. Nobody have to go in my bathroom. Nobody have to go in my refrigerator. Nobody have to be in the kitchen when I'm cooking. Nobody have to be there. Just me. You know, it's not a lot, like I said, but it's a start. It's a start. So um, I don't want to get you guys found out everything until the end of the month, but I don't want to be. I remember when Spice was missing and I was crying nights after night, wondering if she was dead or alive because I love people, you know. And I think about that. And I said, I do not want you guys to do the same thing. Like just disappear, no guys. Don't. One and two good is no, because they'll be buying cream and I'll be shipping. But the ones that don't know, they be worrying about me. We were last time we seen Olivet, she was sick, she wasn't feeling good. But remember to go to alkalinejungle.com and get all your alkaline needs. You know, once I got alkaline jungle, I wasn't going to be stay sick. I was going to be better. The sickness that got me was terrible the last time. And I started to cry because I was like, again, in that nasty place. But you know, God, God has his way and you got to bring you through something for you to learn. And I think my graduation was now that God realized that now she's never going to go back in sinful life. She's never going to go back, you know, just talking to some guy, open her leg for some guy that think that she's beautiful, our friendship with her. She's not going to do all of that. She's not going to, she's going to live clean. So it's time to graduate and move her up. So the good Lord has touched me. That was my time to go. When that test, when the lady said she was going to test, they're going to move me that night. That was the night that God wanted to move me because that following night when I came the next morning, I went to somebody that I know and the guy had something available. I actually paid three way, but I don't mind pay three way because at least I get something. So um, I don't have to depend on anybody digging up my place or anybody calling me from the shelter to go work here or to dare to dig up my place or to harass me. They can't because I saved my money and I able to pay to the real estate and I was able to gather something. I was in bad shape. I still going through it, guys. It's it's more than I can say. It's more than I can explain. I didn't know that it was so bad. I didn't know that I was going it so bad. I was just getting up every day, making my cream, going out to work, and just trying to keep my head above water. I spent the whole winter outside every single day. I go to work, I ship off my stuff, or I go to there if there's nothing to ship off. And Sundays, I go to the storage and I work, take out the garbage, make my creams. I just always find something to do to keep me going. But while I keep going, I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind because, you know, you might not make any medication. They can't get you to put in a medication, but even though they're not putting in a medication, they're tearing you down. They're slowly tearing you down and they know you're going to fall eventually. So if you go in there, the shelter, and they said, you, you want to get medication, you know, you hear any voices or you hear anything like, no, I don't hear anything. And I'm quite fine, you know. And they're like, yeah, but the person who sent you here and sent you this place, they must have seen that you have some problem because this shelter is for mad people. And you're like, what? I never have no problem. You know, I was crying that I was in a situation that I am in and I make my product and I shouldn't have been from somewhere, but I wasn't like, you know. So they're like, well, then they'd let you go. And then they call you back a couple of weeks later and they bring you back again. They want to know when you was born from your mother, how much siblings you have, how much children you have, when your children was bought, where your child is, where are you this. And they keep going through this. Well, that is to break you. That is to remind you of everything that you've been through. And remember, if you sit there and remind yourself of everything you've been through every single time, that is going to stick to you. 
So what they do, they bring up all your childhood hurt and pain and everything, and they try to get you to repeat it. They try to get you to remember. And if they think you don't remember like the first time you told them, they were not going to get no apartment. They want to make sure you go back again and you just finish doing one and they tell you, look, we got to do another one. So what they want to do, they want to break your mind. They want to get you sick. They want to proceed the medication on you. So that is to medicate you. So that van that come every Wednesday is to perform experiment on you. You see, that's how I got the first disease from that van when I went and they take my blood. They were supposed to do a simple test, which would be um, what you call it. Um, the, the, what the test they call it again? Tuberculosis, where they tick your finger with something. And I know there was out for me because they told me they didn't have that machine. The machine, they didn't have that machine. And I'm in a big van. You come in, you don't have that machine. And they charge four vials of blood. And I posted on Facebook because it's like, this don't seem right. And by the next two weeks, they have this one guy that was working there. <laughs> and the guy came. And remember, he had this can of spray that he sprayed. And when he sprayed his spray, I would got very sick, feel like I can't breathe from the spray that he sprayed in the room. And you have this dreadlocks girl that act like a dyke. She was working and both of them work. And I guess she would fix the bath and fix other thing. And she had a spray. And they would come in the room and sweep a little sweep. Mop, don't even mop the place. It's still there. And spray that spray and left. So I saw the guy looking at me nasty. And I'm like, looking, why this guy looking at me like that? But the guy have a thing for me, which I don't know what it is. So the guy came inside the room and there was dirt on the floor and he did not mop it. He take a little broom and he sweep like he's sweeping, act like he's sweeping. And then he sprayed the thing and then he left. So I get on Facebook Live and I said, you're poisoning me. You're, you guys are killing me. You know, um, when you spray this thing, I'm getting so sick and I can't breathe. I'm going to end up in the hospital. So when you look at my face, my face swell big. So I was on Facebook Live when someone came and spray the spray real quick. And I run to the door and open it. And I said to the Facebook people, look, you see the spray the spray? Look at my face swell. This thing on the mask, and I end up in the hospital. I couldn't breathe. They told me that I have um, corona and I had, um, you call that thing again, um, I forgot the other name of the thing where they said I had Corona and um, what other thing you catch like a cold, but it's not a cold. What you call it? It's worse than a cold. I forgot the name. What you call that? Yes, I got pneumonia, both of them together. And I'm saying to myself, oh my God, but I got to fight this and I got God. And if I didn't have God, I would have died. But they started giving me medication that would poison me. And I knew that because when I took the medication that they put in my vein, I was feeling worse and better so i tell them plug it out i'm not taking none of your stuff none of the oxygen none of that none of that and i had to fight my way out of this i want to get back to the shelter they would not let me in i couldn't breathe and i couldn't stand long i had to sit between and the ground and the shelter that would not let me in and i give them my papers as you know when i left here i left in an ambulance i called from the hospital and know where i'm at and you still treat me like that and they had to call the hospital go to help before they let me in and they even show me back to the door, the guy does the or gay guy and tell me, oh, we're going to send it back to the hospital. He can't be here. And, you know, when I went upstairs, they pack up my things from the locker. Even though they know I was in the hospital, they remove my things from the locker and put it downstairs. And for me to get any clothes or anything, I had to go downstairs and I couldn't breathe. Trying because remember, when they let me at the hospital, I wasn't well. But because they wanted to do all these things to me and they want to cut my brain. Say me have clad blood in my brain and I wouldn't allow it. They turn against me. And they turn against me and the doctor come in every day and he start to disrespect me and curse me. That is why I'm afraid of hospital because of what I went through. Because the way he cursed me, I thought it was somebody that I'm fighting with on the street. Like in some ghetto area and somebody, I couldn't believe it was a doctor, which is a, supposed to be intelligent man, that responsible for your life, could be treating her like that. After that, I feel like I was under threat. I would not take any medication and I would not take any of the food or water that they gave to me. The alkaline jungle medicine that get me better because when you come in with this kind of sickness, the alkaline jungle medicine really kept me alive. And I'm not even supposed to say this stay this long talking to you guys, but um, I'm already here. Um, so you know, I'm gonna come live again at the end of the month. You won't see me again to the end of the month, but just know that I'm fine, I'm recovering slowly. Um, I just want you to know what's going on. Remember to like the video and all of that, guys. I love you. And um, it's it's just been a rough road. It's so bad that it's no word to explain everything to you right now. It's like I'm almost gone. Um, 
my mental, my mentalness and everything started to break. And I guess it was waiting on me to break, to break and to finish me. Um, like the lady said to me the last time, the young lady that did the thing, she's not educated like I am. Um, she's not. Talking to her, it's like they put me in a room with a woman to find out all these things about me. And she looked like the one that lead me to counselor. You know what I mean? Because I'm way up there in knowledge and I don't eat certain things. So I know what you're up to. You know what I mean? I got the eyes to see the evil and to see what they intent, you know? So anyway, um, when they told me they got this interview, you know, just to break your mind, you see you there, you're in and out and they use that thing that they used to wave on you, that lighting that beeps, you don't know what that thing is doing to your body. That electronic thing that they hold in their hand, that you got to hold your hands up like you're in a cross for them to check you with that thing like you're in a prison and check you, turn around the back and they do it to your back, they do it to your front, wave it up and down. You don't know what that thing is doing to you. And then they got to search your purse. They got to put everything to a thing, search your purse. You got to climb all those stairs every day. You know, the dirty ceiling, the dirt from the ceiling, the, they use those soft sanitics. And the thing kept falling down, you're breathing it. The fan become black like tar. When the fan, I had to climb up there, pull the fan out, like a powder was stained, wash it off with bleach. And it has these, by a funny couple of days, it become black like tar. The lockers, they cannot remove. They screw the lock onto the wall. On top of the lockers are dirty behind. The lockers are mucky. In the corner of the room I was staying, got a hole from outside. Big cockroaches. I, I kill maybe like 40, 50 roaches. And you know how I feel about big cockroaches. <laughs> and I'm in a single room, like by itself. I didn't want to come out that room to go back in the dawn and all these big cockroaches just coming out these holes. And the cockroaches, they're hard to die. Even when you smash them, they can't die. They're moving like they're robot cockroaches. And you keep killing these mother scunt and they keep coming. You've caught the old with plastic, you stuff it. They keep coming through. You're not realizing it's so toxic that your clothes and your bag that you're using is full of bacteria and germs. Is when you come outside now, you realize a whole bag infected. All the bags that you have, like envelope, is all mildew and mold and shit. And then when the ear outside hit them, everything started turning black. You're like, what the heck? You're taking showers after showers and dirt blackness coming off your skin like you dye your skin black. And no matter how much shower you take, it still look like you dye your skin black. And you're wondering what the hell is on your skin. <laughs> you know, and... You never know that the shower that you was taking water in, maybe was just dyeing your skin black. Your teeth start to go bad. Your teeth is going bad. You're picking up skin infection on your arm, your vagina ear between your butt. You can't use a toilet paper. Because if you use a toilet paper, you're going to end up in that van outside. Because when you use a toilet paper, you end up in the van. And when you end up in the van, the van tell you you got a disease or have something, and then move on to the hospital or the pharmacy. So you realize that the shelter is just there to experiment on you. So you have beautiful girls who come there and they run to the van for rescue because they have no knowledge and power. And soon after that, they walk around with one eye shut and one eye open, all swelled up, busting up each other's face with bottles and tearing on the whole building because they, they want money. So they go and say, oh, yes, I'm hearing voices. I'm hearing this. So they could get a little thousand dollars a month. You know what I mean? So now they got them for the thousand dollars a month. That medication screwed them. And then when they get an apartment from there and move, you won't have the apartment for long. Because when those checks comes in, they comes in late for the landlord to get paid and all that. And the landlord have to get rid of you because he ain't getting paid for his place. They're winding you back right back in the shelter again. When you're going to be able to have your life back, when you've been beat down by people harassing you, crazy people, you live amongst and they put crazy people amongst you so you get no sleep. The crazy person that opened up their private part with bloods coming out of it, beating the locker, doing all this thing, attacking you, and nobody does anything about it. Because when the cops came, they said, okay, just a micro shot, just a fight, and everybody go. People are almost losing their life. They didn't even get arrested. So you're actually life in danger. You got people come to work that don't even like you because they see the light in you. You got manager coming in and see the light in you, they don't like you. You have managers that look at me and say, you know, I'm trying to accommodate you, right? Like I'm catching in their place. But I decide I got to buy time. I decide I got to buy some time and save some money 
and get the heck away with my life. Because I know any apartment that they gave me, it wouldn't be good enough for me with all the stress, with all the harassment. They want to send me to other place to work for them. I do not want to work for them. I send them my pay stops. So I could get a vulture. The lady said there's a vulture in the system. They don't give it to me because I have too much light. And then they're going to send a van to pick me up to take me somewhere. I have nowhere I was going. Nobody know where I was going. Not even the driver don't know where he's going. How can I take a risk like that with my soul, with my life? God is not going to give you more than you can take. And right before he said that I'm going to finish, he renewing my life. Because he had to send me out there to want to learn, to see what's going on in the world. And to see how much they want your soul. See, when they come, they run downstairs and they pick up free sneakers and free clothes and free underwear and they put them on. They put them on and they joyful forget these things. They got the sheets they put on their bed and shit. It's all voodoo. All those clothes and all those shoes is ceremony being done on them. And when you put them on, they keep you lock. They keep you down. That's why it's so hard to get out of there. When I said to the manager, what taking so long? She said, it seems like you're just stuck. But the time when she told me I was stuck, God said, no, tomorrow you will be open. And that's the last word she said to me, I think you're stuck. And at the moment when I was leaving, she said that to me, she didn't realize that two days from now, <laughs> I'll have my own and I won't be stuck because God says so. I will never tell you where I'm at. One thing I never tell nobody where I'm at, but in a shelter. Just ever looking for me? I don't know how you're going to find me. I'm not in a shelter, darling. I don't need to explain where I'm at and all details more that I'm okay. That's all you need to know that I'm fine. And I'm not staying in nobody's place. And nobody can kick me out. That's all you need to know. I'm not staying in nobody's place. So nobody can kick me out. Nobody can poison my food because I'm the only one be using my fridge. Nobody can put it in my bathroom because I'm the only one using it. Yes, my good now. See, I didn't want to come on until the end of the month when I finished organized. But to tell you the truth, I don't really want to keep you this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to keep you guys in like not letting you know what happened to me. The most important thing is my enemies out there. And my enemies out there, they talk that God forget me. And my enemies rejoicing too long. And God was like, them rejoice because they don't know God. You see, the only time somebody can mock you and rejoice about something happening to you because they don't believe in God. But you believe in God, know that no condition is forever. No condition is forever. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you, baby. It's not a lot. I don't say I have a whole lot. But it's a start. You hear me? And a start is better than no start at all. And I myself and get back to myself. I've been cooking. I've been roasting. Guys, I've been making roast bread for me. make burger porridge. And make one of those dirty girl. You know, many things might be that much. But I have a feel I'm going to cook nothing. So I'm going to cook so long. I'm going to catch myself. And so I met dirty girl, I met roast bread food, I make all kind of same thing. Mm hmm. That's what make me hungry. I miss a boy, I'm some color the window for steam and something. I make food shopping. I have quinoa, I make wild rice, I make, make a lot of stuff. I make a lot of food. <laughs> so soon we're going to be able to cook. Don't worry, okay? Some of those good recipes that we need to be cooked for a long time. Those good recipes that we need to be cooked for a long time. Even, even, yes, it's not a lot, baby, but you know, like I said, I don't want you guys to know it until I'm done. Yes, it's not a lot, baby, but you know, like I said, I don't want you guys to know it until I'm done. It's not a lot. I just want you to know it's not a lot, but it's a start. That's the honest truth. It's not a lot. It's a start. And a lot of people out there don't like me and my enemy rejoice. So I wanted to finish everything first, but to tell you the truth, I do not want to have you guys not knowing what came to me for so long. Because you know guys know what I'm sick or not. Unless I'm in the hospital, I'm not going to come live. And I don't want you guys to think I'm in the hospital. Because you know, if I'm in the hospital, I'm not going to go live. 
because I have too much enemy out there. I don't want nobody to joke with nothing for sewage from my day. You understand? <laughs> so I said, let me get on here. Yeah, my teeth, I'm starting to get white again. I said, let me get on here and let you make you guys worry because you guys been there for me and I love you and you really been there for me. I do not want to have you guys win. What happened to Olivet? What happened to Olivet? Because I don't know me, I always come on. I don't want enough for worry. I haven't so long. It's from the first. My day are from the first, but the thing is, I take time I organize myself and the storage and get out everything and dash me for dash and just organize myself. Get some food. Me look worse on this. Come to feel the bone. I'm like skeleton. I mean, when I said I was dying, I was wondering why I put my hand on my face. I feel every bone make up my face. You can't feel my flesh. And then I wonder about weight, but now my feel start to fully in. I'm a hip too. Mr. So Ladam from my side, I feel this big piece of bone I push out of my hip. But really, I said, because I do any vegetable thing, you know, but it's not the vegetable thing, because I'm still for the same thing. The only thing I eat, I come like a dirty girl, a piece of red herring. I'm going to get some spell flower dumpling. I'm going to boil dumpling and dirty girl spell flower. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm so hard. I love you guys. And um, yeah, the people here are okay, you know. I mean, all right, I'm going to own entrance. So I'm going to have to walk to you know where to get to where I live. I'm going to own entrance. My own bathroom, my own kitchen, my own everything. So nobody not feeling my way and I'm going to my entrance and so on. And the light comes right on. If anybody out, the light comes right on. The camera is right there. Right? And people have gone here, so you know that go. If you're not intruder, come on, go on. <laughs> I well set up the intruder, trust me. So, <laughs> eh? Yes, goody. Goody, I love you guys. And there's no words to tell you thanks. There is no way. It's, it's no word to express how great you guys are. It's no way I can tell you guys thanks enough. It's no way I can express how strong you guys are. You talk about I'm strong, you guys are strong. As much as I am and even more. Because you have to be there every day and see what I go through. And it was always there for me still. You never let me down once. Yo, it's Alibet, I love you. You're going to get through. Don't worry. And these words have kept me alive. I swear, I didn't want to cry right now the way I love you guys. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't for you guys, what would I do? Good friends like you are hard to find. My God. My God. Good friends like you guys are hard to find. And may God bless all of you souls. What I come on me, yeah, because me no, no love me, the one who love me. And just wanting me to have peace. And when somebody loves somebody, they want him to have peace. And that's the love you guys give me. I thank you. I also thank you for supporting the business and buying cream that I was able to save and have something and so forth, you know. And I was not no drugs. All I smoked was the weed now and then. And some people say, I can help you get sober. Not no drugs, man. I ain't going to go get no drugs because time get hard. Time get hard and things happen to me. I'm going to do drugs. Hell no. Smoke a little weed. That's it. All this friend just keep putting your money together. Keep your head up. Know that you're not alone. You're not walking alone. And the Holy Spirit is with you. No matter what it is, you're going to get through. Long as you know who you are. You see, a lot of people refuse to know that they're God. And when he says, don't you hear me, God, don't talk and something you blaspheme. You are God. The people who know in their self that they are God. Because God made man of his own image and he gives you his DNA. He gives you his light. He gives you DNA in his blood to know who you are. And that become a problem for a lot of people. But if you know who you are and you stand firm in who you are, even when you're dying like I did. God is going to rise you up. You'll walk till you run. Let's say you walk until you're weary. I run, you not fail, whatever. God is with you, bro. Because he put of you. You don't understand? He's not separate from you. He's not separate from you. He's a part of you. So whatever you're going through, he allow for you to go through is to make you a better person. Is to make you see your enemy. Is to make you be wise. So now he's going to bless you. And your blessing is going to shine. People are going to see your blessing. People are going to see that the God you serve, even though when they mock you, they become shameful. They become shameful. 
I know, cause like look. <laughs> I guess I'm putting a color on my ear now. <laughs> they become shameful. Because why do they become shameful? They mock you. I say, oh, you are so for so long. Oh, the God where you are praise can help you. But every day, you are God, 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 no God, no day. You understand me? But you see, oh, you have to realize that, that God is there. <laughs> they mock you. But oh, you are going to say there is a God there. Is the strength that you have, even on your deathbed, you will tell that I am not going to die. I am not going to die by cancer. I am not going to die by anything that they bought into the system of the mind. Your system is something that can collect. And whatever your system collects, it can be grown like a tree, like a seed. You see, when God planted a seed into you, that was a seed of the Almighty. He put his bloodline into you and he also have his soil into you. He also have the seed into you and that seed that God give you is into every one of his children. But when the seed had burst is when you start to, your self-conscious mind start to believe and know that you're a God. That seed burst and start to grow inside you and it become to have leaf. And then it start to grow fruits. So the ones who tell her that there is no God, how can they say there is no God when you are a God and you got the seeds? And when you pass away, you go back to the soil because you are that soil. That soil is that you can grow a tree, can make a tree and bring forth good fruit. Sorry about my tears. It's only tears of joy. I need to cry. See, guys, you know, when I get on this thing for five minutes, I'm not supposed to be here this long, but I love you. And I know I'm protected. I will. Just give me a little amount. I order my pots and pans and everything online. They haven't come yet, but they will come soon. The betters receive, the betters come. Like I said, I, I don't want to show you nothing yet because I'm not set up. I'm not set up yet, honey. I'm not set up yet. I'm not set up yet. I'm not set up yet, baby. Let's wait until I'm done, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so you are the God. That is why you cannot sleep with any man or put yourself to a woman because that is against God's law. He said, bring forth fruits. Now, if you're a woman of a good mind and a good soul with a seed and you have all your soil and you grow the fruits come from you, it should be a good fruit. Thank you so much. It should be a good fruit. You understand? It should be a good fruit, honey. I don't want you guys to worry. That's why I come on. So I didn't even set up. I didn't think I was going to come on. I didn't plan to come on. I want this cliff there, man. Damn, I'm going to see this cliff. I don't see Miss Cliff at all. I'm going to Miss Cliff and I say, I'm going to burn it also, but I'm going to do my exercise. And I was talking to you guys. I don't know where this cliff is. I got to go search. Oh, it is right here. Look, a big head. It's right here, baby. i <laughs> put it over there. <laughs> no, they don't have no problem with me with that. Because like I said, I'm by myself. <laughs> so I can do anything I want. <laughs> yeah, so um, you have seeds, right? And you go for good children. So when you're a good woman, you're supposed to have good children. When you're a good husband and a good wife, you're supposed to have good children and train your children right. You see, the thing about it is when you don't believe that you're a God, you left yourself open up to be a low frequency being. A guy can just walk up to you and say, oh, you look so beautiful. I like you and start to chit chat you. And most of the time, the things that they're saying to you, you have no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. And if you're not conscious and you listen to that stupidness, you're supposed to say, you ain't got no time to listen to that when you're conscious. When you're conscious, you're thinking something positive. 
Yeah, Tara, I love you too, Thomas. Miss Tara Thomas, yes, that's why I came on. I'm supposed to wait until the end of the month, baby, when I finish, but I feel like you guys was worried. Like I said, a couple of the goodies know because they call and they buy cream and they know that I wasn't, I'm all right, you know, but you guys don't know when I was going to wait until the end of the month, but I think it's another, another 10, 12 days. I don't want to have you waiting and worrying because when spice, when spice, I couldn't hear nothing from spice and I love spice no matter what, you know, I mean, I love everybody. You're not supposed to hate people, you know? And I was worried for the girl because, you know, I like you spice up to her and you pass. That's sad. Sickness is a terrible thing when you feel like that. You know, I didn't want that to happen to her. So I was worried. I was like, come on, Spice. You can't just come on and say even two words if you can't talk. And I was open for that. So because of that, it's toggling in the back of my mind. Don't let that happen to you. I'll have better make people worry about you. Like what happened with Spice. I don't want people to feel like some are weird and I will wonder what happened to me. I come live on Facebook, you know where. I don't want that. So I just set my app on real quick and not to get you guys worry because you love me and you show me love. Some of you all donate before somebody, some send me $1,000 before I don't know who sent it. One of my goodies sent me $600 before. Some of my goodies sent me $1,500. My Amber, I sent her two little cream and I said, my girl, and my Amber, good, Amber queen, good girl. She sent me $400. And you know, people be sending a little discount, my goodie, she buy a cream, she buy a cream, she, cream. she give me $50, my goodie buy a cream, for she still me send $50 extra. I just so they deal with me, so that's love. So I have to make myself in a better place, even if it's not much, but at least I'm by myself. When I upgrade, I upgrade to even better. You know what I mean? But for now, I need to get away. And this is the only thing I could have find, you know, at that time. The other place was too big, and I'm here alone. So I just take what I could have to get. Because, you know, it's an emergency. And I'm spending $170 a night for the hotel in Brooklyn, right off Atlantic Avenue, um, Tika Avenue, and Atlantic in Brooklyn is a hotel right there. Me go in, man. Me have a hard time with a hotel there. Me go in the first time, me get a room in a so bad. The second night, it was terrible. Go panic. Remember what me do, me see? All kind of body fluid, panic, whitey, whitey. Was somebody just come panic bed and then just left it. The sheep panic bed, I look like doodle the panic bed. I mean, I say, what I want is panic sheep. Me go downstairs, go man, I say, look at this, it's disgusting. And the room stink. That's like the worst hotel in Brooklyn. Trust me, the worst. And it's a hundred and seventy-five dollar for night. But you check out at twelve. That's the good thing about you checking at two o'clock. And you check out at twelve. But the two nasty man. And if you clean up a place better than that and renovate the place, clean it up. And the last time, woman put me right by the subway, girl. I couldn't sleep. I wanted to sleep so bad, goody, that me take the blanket off the bed and take my sheet and me carry it and put it in the bathroom. Imagine put it in the bathroom, you know, and lie down between the toilet. I tell you what I got you. Lie down between the toilet and close the bathroom door if you try to get some sleep. And that time you feel like the train in my head. Because the room, the right to the train. You don't rent a hotel, never rent to the train in the front of the train there. Girl, the train come like it up in your head. You can't get no sleep. You can't get no sleep. And I tell her, man, that was a nightmare last night. Me tell her. And I left and come back up here because the gentleman said, come and, and come collect the keys. And I come collect it. And I just get one piece of old sitting and put on the floor and just start sleep. Maybe they didn't come because I can't take it. You know what I mean? I just get away from all of that to myself and so on. Yeah, so God is good, man. Yeah, one of my landlords is Jamaican, one is Amer um, Jamaican, and one is American. Jamaicans. I'm kind of glad too because I was like, damn, I was looking for a place in Brooklyn <laughs> and I couldn't find one, but that's cool because I, it, too, it too nice you out there. I mean, nobody bother me. So I'm kind of glad that I'm in one far, far place, deserted place. I'm kind of glad. Out of reach, out of mine, out of everybody's sight. Nobody don't really have to see me unless me have met them see me because nobody know me. There. You understand how me? Nobody know me. You understand me? <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> I love you too, baby. Love you too. Love you too. Oh, it makeup lover. Love you too. I'm gonna get some of that makeup color thing. You know that makeup thing. I forgot what um the, the person selling makeup. They sell like um purple and blue and different color foundation. I like that. I love that because you know those kind of things I like. I'm gonna try to find by the company sell it and try get it to ship to me. The makeup color, I got like blue, pink, different kind of makeup foundation. Because, you know, when I do my sketch, you know, my different sketch, I like those kind of color things. You know that. You know how I am. Love you too. Love you too. Yes. 
Yes, Balson, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it, Balson, we made it. Thank you, I love you. Is it a woman or a man? I don't know, but it's a person of great love for me and reaction too. I don't see him come on today. Must be busy, I hope he's fine. He, she, or whatever, it's fine. All of you guys. Top, I love you too. God bless you. God bless all of you. Sucking on, sucking. I can't spell any of them. Sucking. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, God bless you too. All of you, all of you here. God bless you. Bonnet, God bless you. NB, God bless you. Gio, Gio always here as well. God bless you. Always there with me through the, through the tunnel. Gio always never left me. God bless you too. All of you never left me. Nia, love you. God bless all of you, man. Oh, God, man. Oh, God. So, love all of you, man. I don't know. God bless you. Sweet Jane, God bless you. Yes. El Simit, God bless you. Yes. Skin care, God bless you. Yes, God bless all of you. So, um, you know, my skin is darker than this to me. I started to fix up my skin. No one thing to but. May I give you this story now? So, Goody, so much we have to talk about. I mean, remember, see, I three years, you know, December, I'm like three years, you know, I have a lot to talk about. The worst thing is, it's like you got these grown ass women, you know, and they be sleeping with each other on the floor in a dirty place. They be eating each other and all this kind of nasty thing. Nasty as hell, bro. They're sick. Sick, me never know a human being could have sick so. Me never know a human being could have sick so. But they plan for me and they plan to take Olivet Smelly down. They go in in my Google, they try to mess with me, if not to get my commercial, they try to take everything down to put me on and on completely. Because I upload that, that thing, they told me to upload that, that app. They are in a wrap and realize that thing inside my wonder why, where's my commercial, why, what's going on? I want to go inside and realize the app is in my pocket. In, in, in all of my business, the people and they all up in my business with the app, get inside my account. I don't know. I have to delete everything, take out this chain, my password, everything. People are just jealous of me. And I keep telling them, the ones who work there, a lot of them, some of them is nice to me. And some of them is not nice. And some of them have to act nice with them. You know, they're not good because they were jealous of me. Because I wouldn't give up. I get up in the morning, I go make my dreams, I come back to Manhattan, finish work, I go on the train in Manhattan, by the subway in Manhattan, delivering cream by the subway, getting my creams, bringing some creams back in a bag, go deliver them as I come back. I may come back, somebody has called me, go back on the subway again in Manhattan, take the train someplace in Manhattan, go drop off the sun in Manhattan again. My own stop. <laughs> my own stop. My own stop. You understand me? Because me no say, me believe in a God. And me no say, it has to be. Something has to be done before my death. You know, I didn't realize I was dying until everything. I was like, yo, everything was going bad. My teeth going bad, foot going bad, everything going bad, skin going bad. May I say, no, 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 no. Things that happened to me that never happened to me before. I was like, what the hell? And then I realized most of the people working there, they're watching you. They're stacking you. You have other people staying there stacking you. So you're on a whole roof of narcissists. You're moving from a narcissist place, right? The narcissist stack you. And you go inside there. And when you go inside there, you're on a more narcissist. So I never get a break from all these years. I never get a break from before a popular till now. I never had a break since I've been popular until this day to be by myself. You hear me tell you? And I would not lie to you. First, I was with the guy when I get popular. The one who would be brought on the chink, the man sitting. And I believe what the Nazis say, my help me the Nazis come over there and he start to stop me. And I believe they never get no peace since I've been there. And he rub up all the money and break me down to nothing. And then after I entered the shelter, I was like probably 80, 90 pounds. That's how bad I was. What? And they come again and start breaking down again. Go in the hospital, come back out, breaking down again. Get a disease second time again, breaking down again. Now I kill my man. I'm going to decide to know this is my straw with this nasty disease and everything. This was just a straw because I start moving weeks before this occurred. I fasted and I pray and I start moving my shit. 
I see I'm getting the hell out of here. Out of any means, me no want winter catch me again. Because I know somebody they close, me feel it. I go and tell my son, say, son, I'm sorry if you know that's my life I got in. And I'm sorry to know that I'm going to pass away in a dirty place like that. I would have passed away in somewhere cleaner, you know, more better. And he said, mommy, don't talk like that. Why did you just find something? Just find something. You know, I'm here, you know, and I can help you and you have help you. You have your own way you put away. So, I mean, I may have took a help you. So, what the problem? You know, but you know how that goes already when people want this farm and I did everything, put the account, put everything, and I was able to get through. Money talk and bullshit talk, honey. Money talk and bullshit walk. You have money, you know, the money you have bullshit, you have to just walk as you have bullshit. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But all this time I was sitting on people's step, I get to realize how racist a lot of people was. I get to see the inside of the soul of the wicked. I have something to teach the world. Everything is not lost when I've gained so much. You see, you have to understand that you're a God. Listen to what I'm telling you. Nobody can bring a, a man, white man, and say, this is God. And I'm not racist. I love everybody. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. That she not like it. I like everybody. But it's truth. Jesus Christ is a black man. That is why he was so hated and he was crucified for being who he is. And you has been crucified too because of who you are. That should teach you something. You have your own people that's supposed to have the same color as you are and they crucify you just the same. But when you're up against people that want to crucify, you want to hate, you want to fight, you want to make your life problems, realize because you're better than them. Realize you got something special. You know what it feels like walking down the street or, or sitting on the train all about, and you know, people look at you a certain way and you just give them a smile. Your eyes might be closed and you saw them looking at you and you could see them through the street and you smile with your eyes closed. They wonder why you smile, your eyes are you. How can she see me? And her eyes is closed, but I can see you, I can feel you. Because you have the blood, you have the DNA of God. The trees that you see outside have the DNA of God. God make them. All the trees look like you're here. Me and my sister here. This one of this curly here. This kind of here. We all have the trees here. And it traces us right back to the Garden of Eden. Believe in yourself. Believe in your power that you persist. No matter how hard it is. Because it's not going to be easy. Because you're powerful. How much people using their power? How many people know that they're powerful? Some women depend on a man to give them loving, to give them sex, to feel like they're a woman. Or a man go to a woman to feel like a man. You're not supposed to go to nobody to feel like who you are. You're born with it in your bloodline. No loving, no sex. can make you a better person. No, you have to make a better person of your own self by that seed that in you. You got to let that seed burst and let it grow in you. And as it grow, that tree of knowledge take you over and you realize that sex are not that important if the person doesn't have knowledge like you and the person is not like you to fulfill that as a loving partner. You share each other love. It's not something that you go ahead and just do. And that is why many people are so poor. They cannot make a breakthrough. Because they're masturbating. Because they're jumping from one woman to the other. One man to the other. And that means you don't know who you are. 
You're using your body like you're an animal, like you're a dog or something. But know that you're a God. You're in high demands of your frequency. You're in high demands of the frequency of that person that will make your frequency even higher and let you grow more higher in knowledge. Because when a man comes to you and you lie down and deal with him and he's not a clean person, you pick up all the negative energy. It keeps you broke. It keeps you arguing with him. It keeps him cheating on you, coming back to you, bringing disease to you or whatever you want to bring to you. Your life is in hell. Because you need to know who you are. You need to know. I don't understand what you're saying here, darling. You need to know who you are. You can't depend on a person to give you love and to give enjoyment in your life. You by yourself are supposed to be happy to yourself and be enjoyment to yourself. And then if you find somebody that enjoy life like you and have the same knowledge, then you can accept them because they're just like you. You don't want problems. Okay? How are you going to accept someone when you're not a frequency of knowledge and you're going to open your leg to someone and lower your knowledge? Put you in eternal hell with demons because it wasn't a to run up and down to the doctor with all kind of sickness. And the doctor can't find it because it's coming from you, your energy itself. You destroy the negative energy that comes upon you because it comes upon you and writes you. You have to try to destroy that. It's not a few, but you have to get rid of it. So if you have someone, every time they come around, they beat you down or they insult you, they're working on your energy. They're canceling you out little by little. But you have to stand up and realize that you're a God and you're not going to let anybody use the vessel of God and to dump their garbage or to use you like when a person want to go to Thailand to pee pee or doo doo and they just let what they want to let off on you and then they just walk away. You understand what I'm saying? Your energy is who you are. And that's why when people destroy your energy and disturb your energy, disturb you. And sometimes something can go in wrong and your energy pick up like something ain't right. Something, something ain't feel right. That's your energy, your God energy, picking up stuff, the unknown, to let you know the unknown and to know the unknown. Right. Listen, don't ask me. That's why I don't come on here and say anything to anybody. Don't come in here and question my business about my landlord. If they're good, they're bad. That's my business. Because most of you that come in to worry about landlord is because you don't mean good for me. Because at least you be worried about I paid my money. You worry about the landlord, good or bad, they hate good people. Don't worry about that. If I have a problem, I just move on to the next place. It's very simple. It's very simple. Don't worry about that. That's why I don't come on. Because I want to find everything. Because I have some people that don't like you. And they're going to start dig down in your business. You know what I mean? I'm fine. That's all you need to know. If probably give me a problem, I just move on to a next and a next until I move into my own house. Just very simple. I don't worry about good or bad. I just move on. I cannot sit and worry about people if they're good or they're bad. Because my energy and my light is different. So if something is not good for me, I have a problem, I just move on and get the next place and move on. And that's all is to it. I cannot worry about people's energy. I got to worry about mine. Right. 
I don't worry about the wrong things. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. I paid my money and that's it. And if I wasn't good enough, then that's it. And if I have a problem, I just move on somewhere else. If I have a problem that I can't contain or I can't fix, because anywhere you go, you're going to have a little problem somewhere or the other. And if I have a problem I can't fix, then I just move on. It's very simple. But for now, I have a start. And I paid my money. Yes, yeah, so um, like I was saying that we are gods. And you cannot have people stand in your way of your godliness. You see, I don't need to have a man between my leg. I don't need to have a man to make me feel like a woman. What to make me feel like a woman is a cleansiness of my body. Being clean, not being run around, nobody messing with my energy. And I can stand firm when I say God, when I say Jesus Christ, when I say Ashia, when I say source. I can stand firm who I am, who is my father, where I get my knowledge and my strength and my power from. And to cope everything I go through, he gave me the strength. Without his strength, I could not survive. So you don't need to go around to get a man to satisfy you, to make you feel like a woman. Your knowledge is going to satisfy you and make you feel like a woman. And knowledge is going to satisfy a man who seeks knowledge make you feel like a man. And whosoever come in your life has to be knowledgeable. You don't want somebody come in your life and a whole parugo dong, do dong, dong. They might drink too much liquor, they might fight you. They might go hang out with them friend at night time. Come in when they feel like coming in your place, turn you up on bed for going to use your body. You don't know which part they might come from, think a liquor. All kind of argument every day about this and that. You don't want to live like that. You better you live by yourself. Because a relationship like that bound to go bad. There's nothing you can do to save a relationship with a person who doesn't have the knowledge of God that don't believe in themselves. If you don't believe in God, you don't believe in yourself. You believe like, no, God, no, they're man, and rare, rare. Then who are you? Who makes you? Why when you believe, it makes your life better? Why when you believe you got this excess amount of strength and power to fight? But when you don't believe, you don't have nothing. You don't have no faith. You don't have nothing to come true for you. You're lying on a dying the ground. But when you believe, you only generate your blessing to come and to help you through tough time. And the end of the day, you realize, man, when it's time for you to go and not to be here no more, what happened to you? Your body died. But your connection from God cannot die. That's why I said you have everlasting life. Everlasting that when you passed away, your frequency can see that you passed away. You can see everything and still hear everything. See and we're like, when are they are seeing me like that? Because you're connected to the most high in of his DNA. And when they crucify him, he had rose. Remember, he went back and he had rose. And you will rose just the same. When you passed away, you rose. Just like oh God was a rose, you awake. Say, Lazarus, come forth. People is going to try to mess with you. When you know you're a child of God, they're going to try to get you to do wrong things. They're going to come to you and try to put wrong things in your mind to see if they can subside you to do sinful things. Things that will break your strength, who you are. Because once you're doing wrong things, it breaks the power. The godly power that you have, that power to watch you make you feel good. You wake up in the morning, you feel, you know, feel, you feel good and light. It breaks that power and then put a heaviness. Because you go out with a person and the man said, Why? I never like a woman and I talk to him about me like you. You go and go lead on with him. I never like a wife, you know, and things now work out and you go lead on with him. You pick up demons. And what he does is see the light in you and he knew that you're a light of God, but he wants to destroy it. Because he knows so that once they lie with you, that demon power is going to take you in and it's going to break you to the core. You're going to just get up crying and feeling down and feel hopeless like you don't want to live no more. That's when the demons fully take you over. Because you knew you're not supposed to do anything like adultery, sleep with other people, husband, and run up and tongue and things like that. It told, it told on you. So it breaks you. It puts, it breaks that divine line, separate it like when Moses is separate the sea. 
That connection at those wire them from the most high that give you everything, joy, peace, keep away sickness, heal you. When you're sick, everything away from that. That broke open. And if you're open to the whole sinful demons and everything start to run up in you because you broke that covenant. You open up that box that was locked with all the good diamonds and gold and jewelry and everything. I think you open up and you just give it away to all the thief. And the thief comes in and they take everything in your soul in that box. And they used you because you have the flesh and you want to, you want a man, you want a hood. So, all right. You see the face, you think the face so good and me have hood and me have a big hood. All right, let's do it. But you're going to suffer the consequences. Because your mind is too small because of the flesh. Your mind become that small of a little crumb. I go take over your life. And you go fall for that little feeling where the demons will come and take you over. And your whole life going to be in mess after that because it's not a good person. So it's best to get somebody who's already walking. Somebody will eat the same thing you eat, be like what you be. When you wake up in the morning, you smell like a fresh gone baby because you're not eating certain things that sweating out in your armpit or your private parts. Somebody that you can reason with. It's hard to find anybody you can reason with if they're not on your line because you don't understand nothing you're saying. Like, yeah, you're a mad man, man. You can't understand nothing you're saying. I cook my pork and my beef and rare and drink up some milk. And them stay in that, stay in that thing. But when you're choosing to do the most high work, he's going to open you up. He's going to put surgery on you. He's going to let everything that you can collect. And you're only going to go higher and higher and higher. See, that godliness in you is not for everybody to touch your body. Oh, go by your body. Feel up by your body. They're making you poor. They make demons. They're arguing with you that a friend come and friend you and they come and friend you. They want to see in your house. They want to see your closet. They saw the clothes that you wear when you walk outside your nice heels and your dress. They, they saw it and they hate you. They've been friends with you. Because they're setting up somebody to take your life. Because they're jealous of your clothes and your house and the things you have. They have somebody, same person that you're friend with. Come in your house, setting up somebody to take you out. Borrowing your clothes, borrowing your shoes, come eating your food, coming with your house. You're not a friend and company too much. How come you can have friend and company that much? And you can't meditate by yourself. You can't have friendship to your own self and to your own power, power and knowledge. But you're kick, 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 kick. This is the first time a friend. Kick, 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 kick. Everywhere you go. Ghana dance, dress up, tin and batty. Go, me I go, man. Party tonight. Drink how much beer with the last money you have. And you're putting them hungry in the grocery. You're putting them, I run up and down, buy it in the church, 13, 14 and pregnant. They don't know no better. They might eat the same thing, no knowledge. Why can't you spend time to know who you are before you go and demonize somebody's life? I'm good, goody. You demonize somebody's life. So a lot of women out there, they're stupid. And not a man. Because you allow people to come in because of their looks. Looks doesn't have nothing to do with your relationship when you have knowledge. Looking at the outside don't mean nothing. It's the inside that have worth. The knowledge, when you get a woman with knowledge or a man in knowledge, you don't have to worry about a person who's so knowledgeable and the gift of God to go and cheat on you, to lie to you, go be in the back and do stuff. Because they know the punishment that they're going to malfunction. They can't do it because the way they're going to feel might as well be alive. So when they're awake, they're not going to do it. But somebody who is not awoke will do anything. Then the ambati. Then you have crutches. Then do everything and things so that I go old man. Now, look at what Queenie going through. Look at what Queenie going through. You know why Queenie going through that? Because Queenie did not love God the way she's supposed to. You can hate me for what I'm saying right now, but I don't care. Queenie doesn't see life as a knowledgeable woman. She can't see anything because she's so cocked up with sin. The only thing she worried about is the next calm that Dewey can give her. And that is a problem. Hi, my love. 
And that is a problem because you only cater to the flesh. I'm fine, baby. God, but you only cater to the flesh. Now, if Queen had catered to God and knowledge, even if she married to a younger man, many women marry to younger men sometimes, it doesn't go bad. But she doesn't have the knowledge of God. She's trying to be a dancehall queen. She's out serving the devil so much, she couldn't recognize that her daughter was passed in a way. And how can she be out there getting married when her daughter is passed in a way? She should be at her daughter's side all the way taking care of her daughter. She wouldn't have time to get married while her daughter is passed in a way. A woman that loves her child is going to be by her child's side. They don't have time to worry about loving and getting married to a no young man and having a wonderful time. The Palm Beach all boat while your child is going to take her last breath. That is a problem. And that is why if you didn't sell your soul to the devil or sacrifice your child life, your life would be better. Not saying that you do. But sacrifice mean in different ways. You sacrifice by wasn't being by her side. You were living your life like you were her in her age. And she was the mother. And even if she was the mother, you should have stick by her. Get her some herbs. Get her some clean out the system. Stick by her. But instead you was out there getting married. And in marriage that you was getting married, you get married to somebody that could be your son. And this person hasn't had enough knowledge and power to understand what they get themselves in. But because you want the flesh, because you want to devour the flesh, that was only, you didn't need the blood of Jesus Christ to cover you or cover your daughter. You never go live praying for your daughter. You never go live calling on help to pray for your daughter. You was about having a good time. And every time you go back to the grave, you go there to pull strength. You go back to the grave because when you go back to the grave, you go there to pull something from the spirit. And that is why your life could never be better, Queenie. You're a grown woman, and what you're seeking for in dance hall, you will never find. And your relationship with that young man will never go good. And if they, you run around and you sleep with all these females bringing back demons to you, how you expect your face is going to look? And he start to beat on you because that's a spiritual marriage. Did you know that when a woman tie a man, their relationship could not work out? The man is going to be sleeping with all kind of woman is going to be beating you? Because that was his true connection with you. That was something that was put spiritually. And he's going to hate you and dislike you because that was his true mind. That was a spirit that led him to see you in a different way and have you to marry him. Now the demons take over. And the demon let loose in your life. And the only way your life can be fixed is to repent and to turn to God. And drop everything. Because death is next. I don't wish death on nobody. Because I don't want it. But when you're full up of demons. You're collecting demons. And you're so depressed and crying. And looking at us. You're letting the devil get the best of you. You're making him get the best of you. All you worry about is dance. And this and that. You're not worried about your own health. You're not worried about God. Healing yourself, going fasting, doing certain things. And that's why I can't sit here pining. I used to worry and it used to make me feel bad when Queenie cry. I used to cry, but I can't do that no more to myself. Because she has the power in her hand. And all these women that a man's sleeping with must be picking up disease. 
And if he comes back to you, that means he's inoculating your body with disease as well. And he's saying that if he talk about you, he has no call here. What can he has secret about you? And no secret he can have about you that he don't have about himself. Because if he's sleeping with you and something wrong, why is he sleeping and inoculating everybody else with the disease if that's the case? What else can you do that nobody don't want it? All your fans would leave you. I think I want a man who's going to run around unprotected and come back and sleep with me. No way. At my old age, no way. But when you don't have the spirit of God, you only depend on the flesh, you think that's your savior. And you're going to run back to it all the time and that make you feel good. That is not your savior. You got to learn from your mistake and grow up. Grow up. You're not a child, you're a grown ass woman. You got to grow up. And you still stay in my husband after I take a piece of flesh out of your face. But this is what happened. Most of the time you see in Jamaica, you see a woman and man fighting. Most of the time, woman them tie the man. The man beat them with all my shit. And all kind of thing. And then I left the man. The man cheap on them all, both of picking all, but then I left the man because him tie the man. And the man is miserable. So I'm not here to put anybody down. I love Queen, like I said, but why is she going through that? She need to catch her frequency. That's why she's always crying. That bad spirit need to let go of her. She need to free up herself, free up herself, let go off of that, free up herself, turn herself to Christ. Once you turn herself to Christ, turn to the Christ within you. Nobody has to get up and go to church. Turn to the Christ within you. Well, if he's not coming back, she should thank God for that. Because you have some of these men, they do all these things and they, they're obsessed with you. You can't get a break. You have to call police. They might try to hurt you. You have to hide. You have to move to different places. They might stop you. So thank God he's not coming back. That's a good good way that God deliver her. And if God deliver her like that, you should take it and run for it. Take it and run for it. Yes, yeah, so I love you guys. And you're not going to see me again after today until uh, the end of the month, okay? And so on. I'm trying to quote myself and the peace pray fasting and so on let's come off my fasting actually today i'm gonna to say i come off my fasting and so on so i my eye look fasting and so on so um i love you guys and just understand that don't house and beat you as a woman friend you back up and beat you again because one day is gonna take your life one day is gonna get worse you just see what he can get away with and once a person see they can get away with a lot of things then they have a problem. They're going to continue trying to get away with it. You can't put up with that. Somebody beat you and make you get all up. You become eligible. You become something else. You know, look how you look. You're fresh by your body. You're sheep. You're going out to work. Come back in as a slave. They beat you. They insult you. Come back home sad every day. You cannot allow that. Don't allow it because God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear only comes from demons. It doesn't come from God. You can't sorry, sell a car without a light. That's right, baby. Your skin, all right. Trey said, Trey said, you can't, Thomas, Trey Thomas said, you can't sell a car without a light and you can't see without no light. Let's talk about the light. Let's talk about the light, baby. The light that you have and you can see. It's mean that even where you're sitting right now, you can remember talking to or seeing some people into the deep right in the eye. Remember, like seeing some people like, fully demonic you can see how they look at your train in the bottom, the way you can see that they want something from the light that's in your eyes. Look at your eyes, just that big bright light in your eyeball. Look good. That is the light of the Holy Spirit that's within you. And many people do not want you to have that light. That light makes you can see to your enemy, your demons, seeing everything. That's why I had to run for my life because I realized I'm in danger. They want to send me somewhere where I don't know where I'm going and they're planning to take me away let me disappear. And I'm not going to disappear. I'm going to run. And when God sent me to run, God has something waiting for me to run right in the next day. Because where I run to, I run right into where I want it. So if that never happened and I run and decide, <laughs> hello, hallelujah. Don't be discouraged of anything that you're going through with anyone. 
if something come home, don't feel bad. Don't think I love him and I can't live without him. If you feel that way, that means your soul tie. You gotta let them go for the next good person that God have waiting for you to come in your life and flourish on your children and be a father to your children and be a good husband to you. You gotta let them go. You cannot let the narcissist continue to control you and brain fog you. When a narcissist is wrong, you can't move. No matter what a person tells you, you cannot move. When you entangle the narcissist, they got the demons that keep you tied. You can't even think straight. Where you gonna go? What you gonna do? It's like you can't move. You're moving around and trying to move, but you're still tied. It's heavy as a goddamn lead. Let these spirits go. Let them find a way out. Don't let them use you and live through you. When a man died and he left his house and his spirit is no good because he lived a bad life. When he died, his spirit come right back in the same house. Because after I grow around, he came from away, come right back to where he was before. When he came back, he got seven more spirit of wicked than he is come back in that house. Right? So think about that. You have the power to open doors and close them. You have the ability to see evil, to smell evil, and to figure out all the evil around you. You have the ability, somebody give you a glass of water or give you a gift to know that this gift ain't good because the spirit going to tell you, don't open a gift, put it in the garbage. Or the spirit going to tell you, don't eat this. That day I got a scliff in my bag. I came back from shipping the things. I moved things a week ago back to the storage and I said, I'm going to move. I get on my knees and I start to talk to God. I say, it's time. I do not want to do another winter here. It's time. I go ahead, I took the food stamp I gotten, <laughs> and I bought all of it, spent all of it one time, I bought some nuts, some this, some that, and all kind of thing I need. I put them in a box, and I tape it up, and I put it in the storage. I bought seven dozen bottles of water, and I put it in there. I said, just now I'm going to get my plate, and anything can go down at the same time, and I won't be able to get water or anything. Make sure I got these things to take with me, I have something. And there it was, I moved them in here a couple of days ago. So your action trigger things off. When you start to pack things and you're looking for a place, you start to pack things to move into the place without getting a place. You open up the doors. You put in the frequency in the universe and it start to work because you're God. And if you sit here thinking about a key to a door, sitting there thinking about anything you're thinking about, as much as you're thinking about it, you don't see come to life. Why not come in? It's coming. Because you already put it in the universe and anything you put in the universe is going to happen because you're God. Now, when negativeness started to come to your mind, you think something negative is going to bring you down and make you feel stressed. It happened to me still. Blow it off and start thinking negative. I mean, positive. Blow off the negative. Start thinking positive. Get back on the happy track. Get back playing some music. Smoke a liquor. Get back doing that. Because the minute you lie down in the bed and one thing started to come to mind and one thing started to come and you started to lean on negativeness. Next thing you know, you got sick. You can't get out of bed. You're in bed for the whole day. You understand? For the whole entire day. Somebody say, what is happening? What is happening like what? It's uh, happening. The Holy Spirit is happening. What you need to happen, the Holy Spirit is happening. The person said, what is happening is the Holy Spirit working. And I'm talking to my beloved before I go because I won't hear from me again until the end of the month. That is what's happening. We are talking about how we got to fix our energy and fix them and put a door onto our soul and not let anybody in. That is what's happening. Not let anybody in come to destroy you. Because you go ahead and open your legs to the wrong man and it destroy you. You go ahead and put yourself with the wrong woman and it destroy. These are not back in the days. These are different days now where everything is moving fast and moving quick and people are losing and people are dropping like flies. Understand that you're okay today and you're healthy today and you're feeling that wonderful vibration of God within you, that seed. Know that contain that happiness and that joy is with your children. 
and being around your surrounding. Map it, make it clean. Cook your little food, meditate, be joyful within yourself. Because sometimes God give you jokes and make you laugh. And you say, God, I didn't know you were funny. Negative people are always want to fight. And in this pig thing, like you take a pig and you wallow in dirt and he stink and dirt. You look at that pig, looks so disgusting. And you wash the pig off. And the pig went right back out and wallow in that disgusting thing again. That's what a lot of people are. No matter how you talk to them, but I don't like what you did. I don't like this. I don't, they still do the same thing. Got a pig. They wall in the same dirt. That's what do he is. He wall in the same dirt. He come back for Queenie to wash him off. And he go wall in the same. Can't get no better. A pig is a pig. A dog is a dog. And a dog cannot be a cat. Understand that you were gods in the past. And you don't remember who you was. And you reborn again. And a lot of you, when you was here the last time, you wasn't free. The last time you was here was in chain and shackles. But you're not realizing that you're here now without a chain and shackles and you're here to pick up the pieces and to be as God, you're choosing by God to speak and to bring other people in the clearance of the frequency of the Christ consciousness to know who they are. You're not here because you're here to do nothing. You're here because you're not calling. You are here because you're here to do your duty. You're here to live your life and to have your children and your wife and to be blessed and to eat food that don't make you sick and eat food that make you joyful and to be happy. So you could expand your, expand your frequency. Expand your frequency. Your frequency, like I said, a seed, it births a tree and it grows fruits. How many fruits you want a tree to grow, you can pick them and you can eat them and you can be joyful. See, loving in a bed is not something give you joyful if the person is not joyful. Because making love is not something that's going to make you joyful without the person you love and the person is joyful. I would live with a man that's going to be joyful without no loving than live with a man that's only be with you and be nice with you because you want to lie up on you. And after he got off you, then he turned the table back again. His war turned over the table in the house, turned over the pots and plate. The children are crying. That's a demon. Demonizing your children, demonizing you. And by your children become 13, 14, they're out drinking alcohol. They're out with friends. They're giant gangs. They got shot. They lose their life. Everything going bad. You have to understand that you're God, and if you're not going the godly way, there's no way your DNA is going to support you. You're going to fall off drinking that rum. You're going to fall off on the cocaine and the crack and everything else that you're doing. You're going to fall off because your DNA was not made for that. God give you a weed for smoke. Don't. That's it. You never give you anything else. So therefore and then, enjoy your life. Enjoy today. Cook your food. Know that you're a God. Know that you're powerful. You see other people like yourself, they're not powerful. So you have to be more powerful than them. Don't let them attack you. Don't let them come to you with your bullshit. Tell me your bullshit and stare into your eyes because they want to figure out who you are. They want to see how far they can go with you. They want to see how much they can dump to you and your children. They want to see if you don't take notice and you don't realize that you're dealing with your enemy. Your enemy could be your doctor. It could be your landlord. It could be your friend, your children, teachers. Your enemy can be anybody, your wife, your husband, your children. Your enemy can be anybody. So you trust nobody but the God within you. That is what you trust. Because that true trust, that is the truth. That is what will never let you down. Depend on people for trust and the truth from people. The truth only comes from within you. You live in the truth and the truth will come through you. Like the guy say, you can't sell a car without light because you can't see where you're going. God of day and God of night. And he give you the light for you to see your enemies. And you can see them through the darkness because your enemy, they only the dark. They only do dark things and food and dark things. So you need the light of God to your eyes to see them in the midday. See them when you walk past them. See them when you've been around them, who they really is. To stay away from somebody who is negative and toxic. Because, you know, they carry demons from the food they eat. They deal with the animal spirit of the soul. When you eat beef, pork, goat, and all that pork, you're dealing with a spirit. So no, you're not walking alone. You're walking with the animal spirit, which is your ancestors. 
Why would you want to eat your ancestors? Why would you want to eat your family spirit? Why would you want to put that spirit in your body that you're still calling to, to be around you? Why? Do you know if a man is not of a high frequency and a man of low frequency that do a lot of bad things in life to bad people and frequency is not up and they died in the low frequency? Low thoughts, they never think nothing great of themselves and know that you're God. They have themselves down as a cat or a dog or animal. They don't manifest the power within them. Do you know what happened to them when they died in that round? They become a cat, a dog, a cow, or a goat. Less than a human. So now you're going to go ahead and you're going to slaughter the dog and the, the cow or whatever. You're going to eat that spirit. That low frequency spirit. That someone was like you, that didn't manifest to the frequency and do that bad thing. They didn't go nowhere. They end up reincarnate into a dog, a cat, a goat, a young sister, and you're gonna go and slaughter them and eat them. Do you understand me now? So you don't need that. God give a fish of the sea and bush for meat. Fish of the sea and bush for meat. As you know, Wendy's a 50 cent burger. Now, Wendy's, um, we call it Popeye, must have 50 cent burger. And I think McDonald's a 50 cent burger. Those are for the unwake people or eating dead flesh that seem like it coming from a dead house, from a dead body. Because if you're eating your ancestor that slaughters the spirit in the body, that's why the spirit right upon you. And you realize it give you disease, it give you diabetes, it give you cancer, it give you all of that. And then they tell you, oh no, you need to eat this so you can get protein. Where did the cow get the protein from? How come the cow gets so big and fat? How come the cow gets so big and fat? Because it was eating grass. Because they were eating the food that God made from them. The birds were eating the seeds and fruits and they fly around singing all the time. They're happy. You understand what I'm saying to you? So with saying this and that, I hate when people say that I'm live and they keep calling me. <laughs> but anyway, um, you realize it's not true. You need the protein from the bush. You need all the fruits. You need all the seeds like the birds and you can eat your fish and you're going to be healthy. You're going to have healthy babies. Back in the days, my mother got, I love my mom, as you guys know. And you know the thing between us, and I went back to the hospital, but she's back at the hospital again. She's in again, and I'm not going back this time. I learned a bad thing she did, but it doesn't matter to me. I want to do my path. But no, she's back in the hospital. I'm not going, guys. I just want you to know I'm not going. My mom had... About how much, how much money she had? She had 50000 they said. She had wrapped up in a cloth in a corner somewhere in the house. And she had enough money. And she heard that I was out there in the shelter, even though I was working and saving. And she never once called and said, my daughter, I got $50,000 there, even using it for nothing. You just tap in cloth. Let me give you 5000 out of it. She gave my sister, don't like me, 7000 the last time. So she wouldn't go in the shelter. And I'm the one that really love her and get the medicine to cure her. I get medicine to cure her for good. One stand for all. I was going to take care of her foot, take care of her heart, take care of everything. One stand for all. And I stand for the medicine. And somebody call after looking medicine to buy. I think she had the person calling probably to get the medicine. I said, go to alkalinejungle.com to get the medicine. Because this medicine will cure you. If you feel like you can't breathe, are you having any kind of problem? You just go to alkalinejungle.com. And you add out of the olive berry. The olive berry is good. With the cayenne pepper, that thing, lick that thing out. We want water your lungs. We can't breathe. That thing, lick it out completely. Because trust me, I was very sick a couple of weeks ago. And I couldn't breathe. I feel like I have the same, the same disease again. But I didn't show up. But I said, man, the way I feel, I can't breathe. And that thing, those medicines really work. Get in your system, get everything out. Make sure to clean your stomach. I want you to know that pooping is a very healthy thing to do. If you don't poop enough, you're going to be sick. 
Let me tell you straight. If you don't poop enough, you're going to be a very sick person because you don't poop a lot. Make sure you poop a lot. Wash your stomach out. Make sure you poop a lot. You know, even the Egyptian all back in the days, our days, you know, how they used to do, I was seeing a thing on TikTok, they used to use something to poop for three days straight. And that's why they were so pretty and their stomach was so flat. There was no overweight because they, they eat the food and they know that the food, they realize that food is something that destroys the body. So the most thing you have to do, you have to make sure you poop. You might eat and eat, but make sure you poop, man. Wash out your stomach daily. Make sure you poop. If you're not going on fasting for a long time, at least make sure you poop all the time. Please. I'm begging you guys. Poop all the time. Clean your system out. Poop all the time. You're not pooping. Poop till a little bit. Uh, squeeze out a little poop in the toilet and it now come out fully. And you go sit down and eat this big plate of food. And you know, poop again for the rest of the day. Tomorrow you might not poop. I might poop because tomorrow that's not enough. You need to poop. You need to get this stuff out your system, bro. Get the garbage out. Get it out your system. Okay? You know I love Macy's. Uh, I love Macy's. When I come live, I know you guys are going to love this. Put on the light. Oops, at the wrong light. Let me put on. It used to. <laughs> Here up days ago isn't it beautiful i know you guys are gonna like when i set it up you're gonna like this it's for my bed it's a 14 piece um it was what 395 dollars i bought this a couple days ago it was 395 but you know usually i bought them like for 250 you know and so on i never bought none for this price but to tell you the truth I like nice things and I like nice sheet. And you remember the narcissist? He had destroyed my bed. Remember that big bed I've bought? He had destroyed that bed because you know, like big bed. This one is a queen size I bought this time. This one is, let me put this up on the wall. All these things are not done yet. Right? So I like this too. This is very nice. I bought this in Queens and Jamaica Queens are some goodies the last time because these are thick. going to be a very cold winter. Make sure you have your thick blanket. You can double up. So these also have the pillow sham for them. Those was nice. I bought them Jamaica Queens. So you can get one if you want. Those are Jamaica Queens. Those are not the $20 one. This one was what, $88. But it's nice and it's, it's warm, right? But this one now, because you know how I am, I told them warm little. But um, I'm going to pay the pillows a lot. I'm just leaving it for them because they wear my them. And they sit them and just left it alone. Some more go natural, but um. I hope I can keep that promise, guys. You know, I like fancy things. <laughs> Next try, I get the promise. Next try. But um, this one is very nice. You see the color? And you know, green is my favorite color. Girl, it's nice. And um, I said, damn, we go middle of um, like $20 shot. Come in, just so much it's going to cost. So I'm going to call. I said, send a couple more dollars for my card for me. Let's go inside. The lady said, no, no, you can get it cheap on Friday. So I tell her, I said, listen, this is the only queen size that left in this one she said no i'm gonna put it in the back and you can come back on friday you might get something off and i said no i'm not gonna buy it today man and she said no 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 don't buy it today leave it and you'll get something off and she just don't promise so like she don't want me put in the back so like she bought my bad night goodie since I'm a woman getting fixed, I told it to come back on friday and i put the tag in it so nobody will trouble it i mean i believe in her because somebody come I don't go give her the full price for it. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm not going to back and look if none of the day and give it to the person. And goody say, you know what? The devil wants to stand up in your way, goody. For your nice things and where you buy. So I'm just go back in here. So it doesn't matter right now. I'm paying for it right now. You know? So I'm just pay for it and walk out. So me have got to put on my bed and so on. Come and like nice things. My body narcissist can't come in and control and put my nice sheet. No. Me know when him say this in mad, you see? Oh God, I know them gonna stop me. Oh God, in goody. Put up shower curtain now, so already what I don't decorate yet, and so you know, but it's all right. I love you guys, it's all matter. And <laughs> like I said, I supposed to wait until another month. I don't want you guys worry. Imagine me gonna leave you guys for another 20, 13 days or more. I wonder why if the whole month come no, that's no nice. Me don't want to do that because when spice, I was really worried and hope spice would come on and say something. So I don't want to be like that, you know what I mean? I mean, I just gotta try my goodies are there for me. And sometimes they're hungry and left money for me to eat and all that stuff. I can't do that. That's not good. 
That's not just go up my business on us and just wait till everything done. Me can't wait so long. It's taking too long because the thing is actually late for ship, for reach. So that is why I still, you understand, goody? So and so on. I have a couple of more things I have to do. But um, yeah, everything just pack up over this or so. Pack up me to make some more cream because people call me want the cream. So I make cream, I pack it up over this so. On the table in the kitchen and so on. But everything all right, man. God is good. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop being here for you guys. And I look at myself sometimes and I find myself lucky. I think I'm a very lucky person. Because everything that I've been through and everything is happening is for a purpose. God about to bring me high somewhere else right now. You think I know you see it? You're not seeing nothing yet? I know God about to use me. So may I try to tell you, say, no man can't get on the front of me. We don't have to worry about no man, see me with no man, because no man can't get on the front of me. I'm not interested at this point. I'm interested to know myself and to help myself and to better myself, come back to myself, nourish myself. It will take me like another year to come back to my complete beauty like I used to be. That's how long it's going to take me another year to come back beautiful like I used to be. But it's all good, I'm alive. And my face not feel like skeleton bone to catch because I roast off bread food. I see me there, I roast around, eat bread food already since me there and yam them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I love it too. And, and, and God bless your man and so on. So, like I said to you, I like them spread, I like them spread, but woman likes you know what I get this I must pay if you want them and carry because I'm not so no more already. And I said, the price them raise because them spread never used to be so expensive, goody. Then I remember it was nice and nice like this one. And it was like, how much I pay? I think like 250. Yeah, man. But no, they raise. Everything raise, brother. Them high price. No, everything raise. Everything raise, no. Everything raise. What is this? Everything raise, my dear. So, let's thank God for life, yeah, man. NB, yeah, yeah, I'm just thank God for life. Balson, you just thank God for life, Balson. And from here on, you know, we, we'll survive. We'll make it. From here on, we'll make it, baby. My love, you know, and God bless all of you. Know. And from here, we're going to make it. It's not a lot, me have, you know. It's not a lot. You can't tell it's not a lot. But guess what? It's a start. It's a start. And with a start, me, we'll be all right. Coming on, nobody. I come in here. I can't use my bathroom or the kitchen or when I lay down sleep. Nobody can touch my fridge. Nobody can touch me sitting there. So it's a start. Yes, Balson. Balson, you know. Balson, you know. You're always there, Balson. And you never get up and you know when I go through. Balson, you know. You can't see it in my eyes sometimes. Like, I live it now. I have the strength, but you have put out the best that she have. You know what I mean? She can't take it no more, but you have put out the best because she believes in her God. I don't know. I don't keep me alive. I don't know. See, I don't alone. I'd sustain me. You know, this time people for realize, say, all we happening around you is to make you a better person. Everything that bad happened to you, I got to wake you up. If you have a man at the house in my cheap and you can I sit nothing to you, I just got to wake you up to make you realize you can't depend on that person to be happy. You have to depend on you as a God because you are a God. If you think about something long enough, my heart did come true. That's about wait, my magic can't be better than other man. Me bad on the other man, dog. And you realize, but people don't want to believe themselves and believe within them. If you know, so when they're dead tomorrow morning, they really can't dead. They don't want to believe in themselves that they are gods. Because God himself be dead too and rise again. They don't want to believe in the holiness of themselves and just be clean. You are dead woman, just be clean. Don't cheat on her, just live clean. She had the age she live clean. She don't go out with a man. They cannot bring demons in between. See a lot of men have relationship and a fight and a much years men are there much pity. But you go out there and cheat. The woman never had cheat and you bring demons in the house. And you go and put demons in the woman portal. Because a woman is even, you have to understand, everybody's a God. But a woman is a God more than a man. A woman is a stronger God more than a man because she open her leg and push out that man. When you realize she's the portal of the universe that give birth and bring it to the earth. So why not you believe that she's a God? If you're a God, she's a God as well. You, you understand what I'm saying there? Is a God as well because a she make you there. You understand me? 
So a lot of people is not going to like you because of your light and realize you're not eating access to them because that's going to keep you low with the third eye in our home. You now can't see anything. You now can't get around. You understand? Like me said, this is not a lot, but it's just a start. Me might end up finding something later on. Me not know better or something. But me say, we're on the run. We're on the move and nothing not attack me. Me don't want nobody nothing. I me make sure I pay my bills and that's it. Me not no problem with nobody. You understand what I'm saying to you? You come in here and me pay a three way. Yes, Malson. Yes, I know you're listening, baby. <laughs> So it's only me forget about myself together now and everything else. But everything gonna be all right. You know, when this me go through, all me go through, that's supposed to go on. Wherever I go through, that's supposed to come like nothing. Especially if I have a roof over my head. I don't have trouble with certain people in a place. I'm not supposed to have no problem getting rid of them or get away from them or something. And if you have to go to a family member, you still have your place. You can lock up your place. You don't have a family member. Because remember, say, you have your place still. You bet you do that more than wreck your in a shelter, you know. He better you do that and lift them and take time to them come out more than sit in a shelter car. You know what I'm going to say with the pit name? A terrible thing. Mash you up, you know, look for you come out alive. If you ever come out, you walk, lean up, lean up and drag. I want to see some people are walking and drawing on the subway. I want to want them walk. So a lot of everybody that been homeless walk funny. When we start to walk, my knees and in my bone, you know, like it's some scary movie. And the demons are crack up here, the bone of my crack. I saw the whole of my bone of my body crack up. Me never seen nothing like this in my life. Me a walk, cook, 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 crack, crack, crack. I see everything I crack, 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 crack. You yeah, said, damn, even the mattress you sleep on when food open it. Puff. <laughs> First night, me sleep up, me I tell you, I say, me sleep on it, me turn on the left, me turn on the right, me turn on my belly, me turn on the back. I see anything, me sit over there every night, I know. When me come up, me have the same habit. Realize me can't stand still from bed. I know me, me not have that problem no more. Be sure you're all damaging that thing is that you don't know I doing it all the while. Yeah, but like I said to you, my wife was like me said to you, don't let nobody, people gonna come to you, and people as a way of come to you about something about somebody like to gossip. Me not, not entertain gossip because sometimes people come and they try to get you to entertain gossip. And that destroy your mind as well. Because when you're supposed to be thinking about your own business, your own problem, figure out, oh, you're going to make your money, you're going to manifest your money, right? Because my mind, when you think, you make money. That's why when a man watch blues, I decide to play with himself or a woman, you're using imagination, right? And it's sweeter, 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 you use imagination and I think what you want to think, what you want to be. And then it's done. But did you know that when that happened to you, you sin against the universe? You have a lot of problems. You have a lot of demons coming in your life. Because so when the universe have, when you're doing that, is a result of you making a kill. That's why the universe open up to you. Because in that action, the universe is helping you to multiply and to have children. And when you sit down and do that and that come out, and it was with an action, a man or a woman, it was a clean action, it go against you. You lose money because you're using the frequency where you used to manifest and think about what you want. You're using it in a nasty way. And when the water come out, it destroys you because it's not coming out into a woman that is cleansed to bring, bring forth good fruit. It's going out in the elements. It's something that you're doing is not good. It makes you weak. Numb up, sick, bad frequency because it's not used in the right way. That's why a lot of people are sick because they're using sex in a different way. We're not using it in the right way. They're using it because of feeling after the feeling done, everything done, and they start arguing and start cuss again. It wasn't good. That is only something that's shared between a man and a woman that truly love each other and living clean and happy with each other to experience that, that love experience between them. It's not something you go ahead and just do. Or a man can't give her money and you lie down and sell yourself to him because of the money. We all have that experience of taking money from man and man buy you this and that and you attack him because of women buy you. But at the end of the day, he was getting more from you than you was getting from him because he wasn't getting nothing. The money that you get and the clothes you buy and the mash up and everything, this and that frequency messed up. The frequency make you could have get more money while him gives to you and you could have been rich. You give it to him for use and abuse your body and when turn on and give you 
he can't even do nothing with and your life stagnant with demons and you call him in an answer and I'm complaining how much he might give you on this answer. when you could have your own business going on you could have been selling your own product and making your own money so when you give yourself to somebody it has to be somebody special because when you give it to them you know you're giving to them all you're giving it to them your mind your spirit your body everything good within you you're sharing with that person you don't want to share that with the demons you don't want to share that with the demons you don't want to share that person that greedy. Me want this, and me want that, and this week I get paid, me want this. That's a person that's all into vanity. Run them out of your life. If me have one slice of bread, I me love you. And me, I say eye to eye. We can eat that one slice of bread and be satisfied with each other and love each other just the same. But when it's not of true love, you want vanity in place. You want new boot, name brand this, name brand that. How much long week, so much money. I don't care if you're, man, this alone, me make for this, my babes, well, give me that. Your man, give the woman it, all him have him talking for go back to work. Never lunch enough. And when he's at work, she's out there sleeping the next man. If you get more than when he get to her when he can't afford it. If you just show you. She out there sleeping the next man, if you get more than when he came up for and give to her at work. You know what it feel like to love somebody at work, you call them and they are next man yard, spread out, I don't want to do, and you come home from work and she smell bad. Even though she take shower, she smell bad. Because you know when somebody touch your woman, you know when somebody touch your man. You're spiritual, you're supposed to know this. So no matter how much perfume she put on and beard and douche and whatever, you know so she's a nasty woman. You know what she have done. And when a person like you can't touch them no more, because I pay a lot of them, I tell that person himself is a demon in the house. And them I tell it more frequently from other demons I bring to you. And playing games with you. So now you are beat down, you are stressed, you are work. You are in love with the person. I can remember them soul tired with them demons. So you love this person more than all you ever love. You're like, damn, I really love the person. But you don't realize the demons have you like that. And you're working every day and bringing a home to this. And you would not have a home to buy a house later. You're not afford to buy anything because all the money you come and give you because this woman does have your tap in a voodoo and a drain everything. No, man. A person supposed to love you with what even one dollar. When I mean that, I don't mean that you don't have your bills to pay and somebody with you, you come together and pay. But if you meet somebody and it's true love and you have the frequency of God, you don't have to have one dollar to love them. They don't have to have a house for you to love them or a car. Everybody in that place to live and put together, you need to be independent. But what I'm trying to say, not like you're going to go pick up somebody not doing good for their life, because when you're spiritual, you're going to be doing good for your life. Whatever you buy and sell is going to be selling. People is going to be buying it because your hands are clean and your art is pure. But you're not supposed to say, okay, I'm going to have a big person because I'm going to like him. And that's a fake love. And when you go in and say, I love you, you're love him because of the car he drive. You love him because of the clothes him wear. Or when I house. You know, love him, feel love him. Say, boy, if you never have a dollar and live out side, me love you just the same as a person. So those are the, the true love. That's the true love. You don't need nobody going to love you. And go to your bank account and then want to say, then go party, then I go party. Where you go party if your sponsor go? What in a party? Then you're going to spend money just to put all the makeup on the best ear, whatever. You can make yourself put together. I'm like, put myself together. But me come put myself together, come talk to her, take a little walk or something. Me not going to party. Because what's in party? Liquor. A lot of people who are demon possessed is in party. A lot of artists who are demon possessed singing to you. Their music is about demonic. It's nothing to rise on a high frequency to help you and your children. So when you're going to party, you're going in a place to serve the demons. You're going to get demonized. You're going to drink liquor and carry on and all these kind of things. People can't get a good get-together event. Moon call that party. Because you get to put on your nice gown and there's not going to be no liquor. You might have a little bottle of wine and good food and people get together. Even those I'm scared of. Because you don't know who you around interact with people with bad spirit and who people are cooking up spirit and bringing up spirit and put on other people. And you're rubbing shoulder to shoulder with them. You're eating the food that somebody made. You don't know who make it, but they take additional food apart and you're eating it. You don't know what's in it. So now you have to be careful who you drink, who you eat from, who you, you really conversate with. Because you know who you are. 
And some people just can't come to conversate with you because they want to know your business. They want to know where they can tackle you, where they can hit you, where it hurts. So now you know the spirit you're carrying and the light that you have shining to see the evil in the dark. A lot of people doesn't have that. You can see evil in the light. You can see evil in the dark. You can feel evil. You can see evil. You know who is good, who is bad, who is trying to trap you, who is trying to bring certain thing, negative vibration to you. Cut it off. The narcissists have a way of trying to get in your head. And how they do, they start telling about other people, which you never ask. And when you see that happen, the narcissist starts telling about, you got to watch yourself. They're trying to get close to you. They're trying to get close to you by talking about other people that you never even ask them about, that you don't even care about. But what they want to do is get inside your brain and get a space in your brain to lay up and sleep up in your brain. That space that you're always thinking about what they say to you and whatever, they're taking the time to come around to see if they can take time to control your mind. Because you don't need to hear people's business. You're not a part of their business and you don't care. So when you meet somebody for the first time and they start to bring other people's business to you, if you're new in an area, new in a place or whatever, you got to watch out for that. It's not a good sign. Like some men, when they want to get close to you, they start talking bad. Like my ex-boyfriend used to talk about all his ex-girlfriend bad and talk bad about this person. Not even knowing that he were talking bad about me to his landlord. He was talking about me bad to other women that he bring to the same landlord he was sleeping with to rent the next girl room inside. And she took it and found out they were sleeping together as a big business. And I was living there. In an old bunch of corruption. So the narcissists take time to try to get in your head a fish in our own, fish in our own, fish in our own. And they started to tell you about, you know, my girlfriend is this is so and so and so. Or, you know, she have kid by a different man. Or, you know, she's overweight and I keep talking about, look how good you look. And you and she, they started with this kind of thing. And if you fall for it, they're going to continue to come and tell you more stuff, which is not your business. So what they're doing, they're trying to rent a space in your head. And every time they come to hear their business in here, it's not a part of your business, but then you got to go about your own life to function about your own life. You keep remembering what they say to you in your mind. So they start to take a space in your brain to try to damage, damage control. Because you don't care. It's not your business. So don't tell you. But once a man come to you and start talking about his ex-girlfriend, is this, is that and that and all this, it's something that he's looking from, from you. Watch your back. Watch your back. Because it's something, and most of the time they do it, it's narcissists. Narcissists does that a lot. I can't stand my baby mother and a kid. I can't stand my wife. She's this and that. She's crazy. She's this and that. But what they're not telling people, I'm the one that made a person crazy. But from you go talking to a person like that, then you realize they are the one that made the person crazy or sick. So you always have to remember what I've been through, I, can, I can't tell you how I'm alive. Can the narcissist have the whole building stuck in me? Everywhere I go, I was stuck. From the store to the, everywhere I was stuck. Everybody in that neighborhood was stuck in me. When I look, I was like 80 pounds because I wouldn't be with him. So my eyes are open to narcissists. I don't listen to strangers come tell me business. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I need to think about my own business. I'm not to think about other people's business. Because I don't need to sit and put that in my mind about other people's business because I don't care. But a narcissist is going to come to you and he's going to say, no, my girlfriend and I got two kids and one of the kids are not even mine and she cheated on me and this and that. And he's going to put on the loudest perfume he can smell good. He's going to dress up in the finest suit. He's probably going to go to the dentist and clean his teeth so his teeth look white and shiny when he's talking to you. And the perfume on his car. But know that a narcissist is a lazy ass bastard. That narcissist would not get shit fixed that need to get fixed. He would not do what he got to do, but he looks clean. When he go in his house, he got shit on his toilet. His clothes is dirty, packed up. His house is a mess. Most of them. And if they come to the house and the house is clean, they clean it to impress you. But later on, you found out you live with a narcissist, 
He's nasty. His breath stink. He dropped clothes on the ground, dirty socks. He's not clean. He slammed the doors. He pushed furniture around. He, he slammed the garbage can in and out. He's busy always working. Let me tell you something about a narcissist. A narcissist is always busy working. Where I live, the narcissist was always working where I live in Brooklyn. Always. And the most important thing that need to be fixed never got fixed. It was roach running out, this water leaking, that, this, that. Narcissist never fix anything. Roach all over the walls and everything, never fix anything. Because the narcissist is so busy telling everybody, oh, he's a handyman and always oh, fix. One thing you could take to mark a narcissist, if something is bothering you and you don't like it, they will never fix it. And it will never fix for years because they don't care about your feeling and how you feel about it. You understand what I'm saying to you? And I've learned this years ago about narcissists. When a narcissist come to you and start talking to you, draw back, tell them what you need to tell them and put yourself back. Do not get involved in their life with their baby mother, their baby father, their husbands, their wife. Do not involve. It's high and by. Because they have a way of pulling you in. Me and my wife have been problem. You know, I'm going to divorce her, but my kids is still young. That's what the narcissist come with. And the narcissist start to love you up, give you $1,000. Go shop, $2,000. Go buy what you want. Buy shoes, slippers. You buy all these nice, sexy clothes. And you come back, you realize you can't even get to wear them. You won't even have the body to wear them because your body start to melt like a candle. The way the narcissist is stressing you out and banging things, they like to bang things. Bang the garbage can, slam the door. They like to knock on doors. They like to pass you. Pass. You feel you got no peace. Every minute is something. You want to be in quiet and peace. That's why I don't want to live with nobody. I want to be in peace and quiet. I don't want nobody to bother me. But the narcissist take the time to figure out who you was and what they can what game they can play with you you gotta cut them off fine thank you thank you so much i'm sorry for what you're going through god bless you that's it you're out and you're gone because if you're going through so much why you want to involve me in it why if you live in a house with your woman and your kids why want me to involve in a relationship with you do what you got to do Get yourself single and get yourself out or whatever for you think about next woman. Why when you live in a house with somebody, you still want to have a relationship? Why you live in a house with a woman in your kids and while your wife is still alive and shit? Why would you want to go out there and cheat? If you're separate, while you're still married to her, stay put. You have to stay put, like the Bible tell you, until that ring come off that woman's hand and you're not separate, separate completely. As a good man, you go ahead and find your good wife. But until then, if the ring is still on the finger, and even if you're not sleeping together and living in the same house, there's no way you should go out and look for another woman and complaining to her, sleeping with her, and going back in the same house. And most of the time, the wife do not want to have nothing to do with y'all because you're a cheater and demon is, demonize her. But you are still going out and cheat, though, while you're living with a woman in the same house. At this time, you cheat until she says she's going to divorce you. Are you going to divorce? Are she not divorced yet? Because some women still love you and expect that you're going to get your ass together and pick up the pieces. What you won't do it. You still go out and cheat while living with her. And tell the next woman that, oh, I'm not leaving yet because my kid's too young or I'm going to a divorce. When you don't even want the wife to divorce you. You know you don't want you because you know you do not want to see next man with your wife. You want to continue being a narcissist under control over her. You want to continue to be that person. So you would not want to let her free. Because you know that she's a beautiful woman. And you know she was a kind woman, a woman of God. And you're a narcissist. And she's an empath. And she's not putting up with your bullshit. But you're continue going out and cheat and still coming home every night. Stacking a woman in a house and watching her. Why can't you go ahead and leave and rent a place? Rent a place and leave the house with a woman and her children and get her life together. But you claim we bought this house together. You're not going over half and half, so I'm living here until. But you're still going out and cheating. You're still coming and gaslighting a woman, even though she's seen, she ain't seen nobody. 
And most of y'all go and take the woman life and even take all your children life because you're a narcissist. And when you decide that the woman are going to be with the more the children, you all want to take the children life as well because you're evil like that. You ain't got no souls. You notice most narcissists, when they marry their wife, they have no children. God bless when they have a children, but most narcissists do not want you to get pregnant. You see what happened to that white man in Nigeria not too long, a couple of weeks ago, how he left America and how he was in Nigeria and he married to a Nigerian woman, a wife. And he go ahead. Let me get some tea. I'm going to drink coffee. I'm going to buy for this. If you like the coffee. When I realized I was walking like my mom, I realized it's bad. <laughs> I love you too. Drink the coffee that I want better. Yeah, I'm going finish up, man. man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm finished set up. I'm not set up right yet, but you know, kind of chaka chaka, but everything's all right. So, anyway, um, where well, was yeah, so he married to the black girl in Nigeria, and they didn't know he has a wife in America, but he does this gentle white man. And, you know, he got to Nigeria and he's with his wife. He paid a bright price or whatever. And, you know, he got married. The culture where he's supposed to get married. And him and his wife together and the wife got pregnant. Tell me if this man is not a narcissist. The wife got pregnant and he told the wife to get rid of it. Why would he tell the wife to get rid of a baby? But somebody, a black woman, and they love white man a lot. And you can't tell them nothing else. But me can't see my ancestors still bring, bring them down and go later. Me can't do it. Anyway, she understood me a choice. So anyway... She's pregnant by him and his, her husband. And he was driving her somewhere. And while he was driving her somewhere, he, uh, he had stopped to, to do something. And he and he come out with a long knife in her hand. So the wife said to him, the white man said, oh, you have pee pee, you have a knife. She was so naive. She's so naive. Um, she said to him, so how you, um, he said, well, in case a wine and a mother or something jump out of the bush, you know what I say? Make him use a knife. I'm going to pee. So he said, come on, come on to the wife. Come on, come out the vehicle. Come on, you're going in the bush. So she said to him, so why would you want to go in the bush to pee? That's going to pee. You want to go further up in the bush. So why don't you go in further up in the bush or whatever? I guess he must have text something. I don't know what he has as something. No, he drive back and say it was something with the car, something wrong with the car wheel. And he come out to one next place again. He moved from the place to the bush and go to the car place, and one next bush place. And he take the jack out the car. So I'm going to fix the car. So in the car, and he tell her, so come out, come out and see. And when the poor girl come out, a man jack that thing on the girl in and lick out the girl lady, you know. And when the girl drop in out, cause in the front of the bush, he draw in the bush. And he take the big knife and start to cut off the woman's neck. And some African people see him and rushing while well, my slaughtered the woman and she end up in the hospital the woman the woman, the woman, the woman the throat, all the way cut down yeah, so. the woman said she didn't even realize because to him lick her on her edge she didn't feel it you know the man cut off the woman's neck because she pregnant by the man left with America left in white Africa go in Nigeria and go to that them whole hand pan him down here try to cut off the woman neck to the whole woman neck plaster up all them something she lucky to be alive once a man art is evil, people, I'm going to tell you this. It's always going to be evil. And it's not every man. Remember, we are godly beings and we are spiritual beings. We are God's children. But you have to understand there's other human on this earth who are not made of God and they're not God's children. And who have not God's children does have a soul. You have a spirit and you have bad spirit understand who you are and why you're not going to be like understand who you are and all your power within you you have the most power for talent you have the most power of strength you have the most power for everything because you have the dna of god stop running down people that's not running down for you stop giving up your soul so easy to the devil stop doing it be strong within yourself and know who you are and know you can't live forever one way, no matter what reach you. It's best 
for bad for reach of sin. So you live with somebody left and go pass on to the candle better and whatever. But don't put up with somebody, wait until them take your life. Because all they're gonna do is sit behind bars and eat in prison food while you're gone. They're still living for years to come while you're no longer here for you and your children. Put your foot down. Because you're a God. I'm gonna go now. I don't wanna over talk you too much. Because I want to come in a couple of minutes to tell you more about me. And don't stress about me. I have to pick up the pieces and so on, but I'm all right. I think my face look a little bit better from when I was over there. I think it's coming on, you know, and, and so on. But know who you are. And don't allow anybody to come gossip about them girlfriend, pum pum big, and this and that. And I can't deal with her. And she overweight, I can't stand her. One time I meet one boy and I'm an aunt, you know. And it was years and years ago, I was still at the narcissist. And I remember I was trying to get on the train. And he couldn't even get on the train, you know. And so, and he looked so hungry. And look at me, Jamaican too. I remember pull out $20 of my purse and give to him. He said, oh, no, man, I said, take the $20, man, and go on. Get on the train on the way after do. What, what's up, babes? <laughs> and the guy asked for me, no, I mean, I look nobody. You know, that's a good, you know, the person I am. I mean, really not look nobody. And, you know, I said, I just want to give you a car, man, and nothing, man. Thank you, man, for helping me out. I'm hungry, treat me, and I'm going to eat and give me $20. You know, the guy called me back. I think the following night, the next day, he was complaining about the woman that he lived with, the woman, the Jamaican girl, where he lived with. And the girl gave him place to live and take care and live with the girl. The man started complaining about the woman fat. And she eat too much meat. I wish she was like you. And this and that, me can't stun her. And I saw the man go on to the woman's place. So I said, yo, do not call me back on this phone no more. And say anything to me because you should be, you should be thankful. Look, it's weird. You should be thankful that you have a place to live. Somebody give you food and things. You know, she, and you know, another person. You know, if you treat her like that, this kind of way on the phone in front of her. I said, me not look nobody now. Me not want you now. Me just do that out of a favor. But most it's me kind. You know, most it's say, well, me can't use a girl and a, a girl a kind of thing. You know, I must say that in my mind. But when I realize I'm a woman of God, I was only doing the best me can do. I mean, I have it, but me try to help sometimes. Let me see how we can help because people help me all the time. You know what I mean, goody? But he took it the wrong way. I was looking, man, if you block him, put me for one. If you go talk to the woman, talk about the woman, nothing want to talk bad about the woman, but talk to them there. And then I sleep, and then I live through winter. Woman cook food, give them, give them shelter. And then want to turn around and abuse the woman in their own place. You understand me? And for them, they don't like to work. They might ask the woman for money to buy a ganja, to buy a cliff. Then go down, go go bar, go bar, go smoke, and go bar, and go smoke, then cliff and play damn, you know? Big, big America. You know, people backyard, and some bar. Then now I find a word, and I help the woman. I she want to pay all the bills, I buy all the food, and when they come in, they come in with rot. Then come in to open my fridge, if you have a case of beer inside the fridge, in the room there, you buy a liquor for me, baby, where you buy it for me? This and that, and things a little grist and hands can make a way. Righteousness is the true way and the light. I'm telling you, the true way and the light is righteousness from your own heart. And you get somebody like yourself so you can live in peace, eat good food, and be joyful and live in harmony. You don't need a raka, 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 raka every day. You can't wake up in peace. You can't smoke a script in peace. You can't sleep in peace. You can't play like a music in peace. You can't work out and get your body in peace. You can't do nothing. Somebody says, run, 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 run every minute. So, no, man, go on with your business, man. Come out, I'm away. So everything is going fine, baby. Everything is going fine. God bless you. Daniel, Daniel say yes and tears. Don't cry. If you're going through anything, D, don't cry. Don't cry. You can't love a man more than yourself. That one thing people know, no. you cannot love a person more than yourself. You see, Queenie? She love doing more than her own self. Me husband, me husband. Husband what? I like a boy that do is I like a piss and tail boy. He might not feel with no big man. That boy could be our son and our grandson. And she bring it upon her own self. I mean, I eat cream, I like cooking, but that's worthlessness. Make can't find like a young boy up on my front. I want up some big woman, big, mature woman. I forget somebody big like myself, mature like myself, live a decent life. She and her husband come out in a love job, them vehicle, then drive them, cook them, laugh. You know, you lie down on the couch, your husband lie down, you, you, you lie down on the couch, you lie on the couch, you lie your chest, lay down on him, you have them attack, and just joyful. Then young boy, one young crutches for jump up in her. I see much, and every time she said, every time you go there with somebody, you come and tell me. That is your worst mother left you. Cause every time you go there with somebody, you come and tell me there with all kind of woman from white, black, purple without condom. Me not there with your man. You're a mashup life. You go there bring gonorrhea to our disease. We can't cure. And you're a big woman. You know what I mean? Big woman have them disease. You know what I have them something there? We smell bad and all them something there. You know, run behind a boy. We are putting, you must pick up something. 
But to out here run right now, if them girls so easy for game without nothing, that mean then they would man with an easy figure without nothing. Same way. Listen, a person character speak for itself. If you don't want woman for years and years to come and she don't know in and out, and you go lay down with them, that means that anybody could have come the same way and lay down with you. Right now, so it's a problem. So I love you guys. God be with you. Thank you for being here. And let me enemy know that no voodoo, no evil cast up a child of God because God on is in everything and God see you all and you're all just going to be wiped out because your own wickedness are going to try to obey other people and do what me. own evilness is what going to wipe you out your own karma and it won't belong so me know say who so on come out for me you can't come because you can't say the presence that God is upon me and he's not leaving no time soon or ever. So when you come at me, when you come at yourself. Anybody do bad to me, when you do bad to yourself. Because I live within the frequency and the righteousness of God. Because I know I am a God. And that's why I believe in God. Because he makes me. And I have the DNA of my daddy. Okay? God bless you all. I love you. You have a good and prosperous day today. Yes, I'm so happy it's me. May not be much, but all you need. Right. Good. It may not much, but that's all I need. Now, a start, I may have that. I have room, kitchen, and bathroom. This is just a start. You may have them three things. Kitchen, I may have that. I have the kitchen, I may have the room, I may have the here. I may have a start, goody. So it's going all right. I just got to finish and thing. But I didn't want to have you guys waiting. That's the honest truth. Some of my goodies know, but not everybody knows I was going to wait for a while, but it's going to take too long. And a lot of y'all are worrying. Some of y'all are calling. And if it's all right, I'm going to like that. So I said, many more people must be worrying. So I was talking to my goodie this morning. She said, go on, man, in a couple of minutes and say something, man, because you know, I'm be like, you know, we don't worry about me. Say, you're right. And that's what I think in my mind from the other day. And it's stressing me out because I need to come and say something. So I said, all right. I don't like to have people worrying over me, especially goodies who send much money, come give me. And sit down, I will want to elevate. I shouldn't care. So I mean, I want to do that. So that's why. Okay, I love you guys. And God bless you. Yes. I love this piece from Macy's, man. I know. I can't even open it yet. I show you already good, but I'm so in love with it. So in love with it. I'm so in love with it. I just can't even wait. To get all the rest of stuff to set up because it's so beautiful. I know you're gonna like it. Let me get my feet done, my nails. It's beautiful, see? Very gorgeous. That's one thing with Macy's, they're always and it's good quality. I like the quality of Macy's stuff, it's good quality. Good quality. It may be almost, almost well, um, $390, almost $400, but it's okay. It's okay because it's beautiful. I deserve everything that I work hard for. So it's okay. You understand? And it's beautiful. It's kind of velvety. And that's my color too. I love this color. I love this color. And so on. So Macy's always got good bedspread. Always. So be joyful. It's nothing to be crying over. Nothing to be sad about. Everything is okay. Um, the storm is over now. And the best is yet to come. I've been through it years and years to come, and I pray, I fast in, and soon I'll get something even much better than this. So God bless you, and I love you, and thank you for being here, and have a great, great day. And the end of the month, I will come, and we can cook, and we can do other things. But for now, I just need to be setting up. All right, so I love you, and God bless you. you. Go ahead and have a good day, and remember that you're God, and you don't have to stand for people bullshit and have them breaking you down. You don't need that. Call and get your creams, 347-469-3874. I don't have a lot of the white cream because you're going so fast these days, and I'm getting resistant to make the medicine because it's hard to get, but that's tough. So call and get it before it's finished. We still have a pump pump tightly available, so, you know, and all of that. So, my love, you know, <laughs> and God bless you. Know? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you.